Hi Year 10, your lesson today is on the impact of the Cold War in America. Um, you need to start off by having a go at the summary question, the, sorry, the review questions um, that you can see on your screen. So get your, whatever you're working on, whether it's your book or a piece of paper, um, or if you're working on a Word document, that's also fine. Um, and have a go at answering these questions. You don't need to write the question out, just the answers is fine. I'll go through the answers and you need to mark them as you go along. Anything that you didn't get, if you make a note of it as we go through. Um, so for question number one, the middle class were moving to the suburbs. That's because they had more money left over so they could save it and they could get a loan to buy um, a house in the suburbs. They also had cars that could allow them to get to work from there. For question number two, life was better for children in the 1950s. This is because women were more likely to stay at home during the 50s. Men's wages had gone up, but women were being encouraged to stay at home, so they had more time with their mothers. At the same time, women were, children were more likely to live in the suburbs, so they had more outdoor space. Life for teenagers better in the 1950s because their families were richer. Therefore, they didn't have to try and find a job. They could stay in school for longer. And if they did get a job, they could use that money as their extra spending money. Americans were encouraged to spend in the 1950s for a number of reasons, partly because there was no unemployment, so people were confident that they would, you know, that they would be able to spend the money. They didn't need to save it for um, a time when their situation might be worse. Uh, another thing was the fact that there were adverts, particularly on television, that encouraged Americans to see the newest products as um, necessary for their uh, quality of life. So Americans would want to buy the newest fridge or the newest car. And for number five, people were spending money on consumer goods in the 1950s. You could have a few specific things. So you might have had the fact that teenagers were spending money on music and fashion, or that adults were spending money on houses, cars, televisions, um, products for within the home, like fridges um, and other uh, kitchen appliances. Today's lesson is about fear of communism during the Cold War in America. To understand this fear, we really need to understand consumerism. So I know this is something that you did last lesson, but to start this lesson, I want us to remind. Um, I want just to. I want you to remind yourself of that. So, could you answer that first question for me? So the first question is, what is consumerism? Have a go at answering that question for me. So the answer to that question is that consumerism is when a society um, regularly spends money on consumer goods that will improve their quality of life. Now, this is really important for us to understand culture in the 1950s and also to understand fear of communism. Because if people are living in a consumer society, they're used to constant improvements to their quality of life as they continue to spend money on better and uh, um, higher numbers of goods. You can see in these two images of a 1950s home, even though they're cartoons, they reflect the expectation that people had of what home life would be like. So you can see there's an interest in decoration. Um, the woman in the kitchen has a large number of appliances that she can use to make her life easier. Um, so life isn't just about getting by, it's about enjoying life. Um, and people really believed in the American dream during the 1950s. So this idea of if you were born in America, whoever you were, if you worked hard, you could improve your quality of life and effectively live in sort of luxury. Now, not everyone lived like this, of course. The pictures that you can see here are from a middle class home. The family are obviously doing well and not everyone was rich. But there was a view that in America, everyone could get rich and people really genuinely believed in that. And we need to understand that in order to understand people's fear of communism. So as we um, move towards looking at communism and fear of communism in the 1950s, we just need to remind ourselves of what fear of communism had looked like in America before, because this wasn't something that was new to the 1950s. And in fact, we've learned about the Red, Squ the Red Scare um, that occurred in 1919 and 1920 um, in America. Um, and some of these images should hopefully um, remind you of this. Um, so obviously we've got red and someone being scared. Um, and there's also two numbers at the bottom and um, a couple of individuals. 
just pause the video for a second and see if you can remember what the relevance of those numbers are. Okay, so 600 people is the number of people in America in the Red Scare that were actually deported. So the fact that people were deported during the Red Scare gives us an idea of the kind of people that were accused of being communists during the 1920s. So the Red Scare was a time when people were increasingly worried that the uh, communist revolution that had happened in 1917 in Russia would spread across Europe and actually arrive in America. Um, so this fear led to um, immigrants from Eastern Europe and from Southern Europe being targeted. Now, those immigrants, even though this was an unfair assumption, many of those immigrants were assumed to be communist and it was assumed that they would bring their communist ideas to America. So as part of the Red Scare, um, Attorney General Palmer uh, argued that lots of immigrants living in America were members of the Communist Party and were a danger to society. Um, all in all, 600 of these immigrants who were accused of communism were actually um, taken out. They were deported from America, so taken out and sent to Europe. Um, it wasn't just 600 um, that were deported, 6,000 were arrested. Now, if you've been arrested for being accused of being a communist, it's likely that you will um, lose your job. So this probably would have affected them for a significant amount of time or potentially for their whole lives. I've also put Sacco and Vanzetti on here because they're an important example of the kind of treatment that people who sus were suspected of being communists would get in America. So Sacco and Vanzetti were two Italians. Um, they were actually communists and they admitted that they were communists. Um, and that led to um, them being treated very badly in a court case. So they were accused of an armed robbery. Now, um, at the court case, lots of people claimed that they knew that Sacco and Vanzetti had not been at the scene of the crime and therefore were innocent. And lots of other people claimed that Sacco and Vanzetti had been there and that therefore they were guilty. In a normal case um, where... Um, or in a case where American people had been on trial, people who weren't immigrants, um, this would not have been enough evidence to find them guilty. However, the judge encouraged the jury to look really harshly on San Sacco and Vanzetti. He reminded the jury that Sacco and Vanzetti were anarchists, in his words, and that they had olive-coloured skin, and therefore that they should be found guilty. Um, and they were found guilty, and they were later executed. So... Clearly, during the 1920s, there was a fear of communism as well. Now, that faded in the later 1920s, but it never completely went away. Um, and after the Second World War, that fear started to grow again. For, under for us to understand why people were actually scared of communism in the first place, we need to know what communist ideology was. So on your screen, you can see a summary of what capitalism um, was like in terms of the politics and in terms of the economy. And then on the other side, you have communism. Now, political system, uh, I hope is fairly obvious. So politics is when that is about who governs the country, um, how people choose who governs the country, whether people have a say in that. And they're on the first two. So under capitalism, you can see the two aspects of the political system, which is elections and freedom of speech. Then underneath that, for the second two rows, you've got um, a description of the economic system. So what I'd like you to do is there are three questions on here. Um, you need to, on paper, on a Microsoft Word document or in your book, you need to answer those three questions, please. So first of all, describe the communist political system, then the economic system, and then have a think about why do you think American people were scared of communism? Okay, so pause the video and have a go at that now. So for communism, I think the first two questions should be fairly obvious. You just need to describe using the table. Um, but just for the third question, have a listen to what my answer would be and see if you need to add anything to yours. So American people were scared of communism because they were enjoying a lifestyle which they thought relied on the capitalist system. They um, had generally high standards of living. They could buy consumer goods regularly. Most Americans had a job. Many Americans had very good wages. They were scared that if the communist system was introduced, they would lose those advantages. Their quality of life would get worse. 
They were also concerned that if communism arrives in America, there would be a violent revolution and then they would lose their freedom of speech and they would lose the ability to have a say in who ran the country. Okay, so if you need to add anything to your answer, you could just pause your video now and add in that information. So why did this become an issue in the years after the Second World War? Now, the key to understand this is the USSR. The USSR had existed since 1917 when the Russian Revolution happened and Russia joined with other communist countries to create the USSR. Um, now, this was obviously a concern to America, but it became a much bigger concern in the years after the Second World War. Now, that's because the USSR had shown how strong it was as a country during the Second World War. Um, the USSR was largely responsible for beating the Nazis in the Second World War, and America was very aware that the USSR was far stronger than it had been in terms of its economy and also in terms of its military ability. Um, now, towards the end of the Second World War, the USA strengthened its own military by creating an atomic bomb. Um, an atomic bomb can uh, kill and injure huge, huge numbers of people in a matter of seconds. And so when the USA used an atomic bomb on Japan at the end of the Second World War, because Japan was allied with, the, with Nazi Germany, at least 130,000 people were killed. Obviously, this atomic bomb really scared anyone who wasn't working closely with America because it made America very, very strong. Now, even though the USSR and America had been working together during the Second World War, at the end of the Second World War, there was no common enemy. They didn't have Hitler to fight against anymore. So the two countries started to grow further and further apart from each other as they realised just how much their differences were. Um, would affect them. So the communist USSR and the capitalist USA became more aware that they didn't want the other side to grow in power. Um, that was particularly the case between 1945 and 1947 because the USSR started introducing communism by force in Eastern Europe. So the USSR army, the Red Army, marched into Eastern European countries like Poland, like Romania, and forced those countries to become communist. And that often involved a violent process where non-communist politicians were killed. America was terrified by this because they thought the further communism spreads across Europe, the closer it gets to America. And we definitely don't want communism in our country. Now, that got even more stressful when in 1949 communism spread to China, which, as you know, is a huge country. And also China is relatively close to America. Um, if sort of the next country along to the west of China is, no, I've got that wrong with my geography, to the east of China, sorry, um, is Japan, and then east of that is America. So it seemed like America was being surrounded by communist countries. And again, in 1949, that becomes even more concerning because the USSR tests their own atomic bomb, which gives them the same military strength as America. Now, this means that fears of communism in America were already growing. Um, and during the 1940s, some people were being accused of being communists, and that was really concerning other people in America. This feeling that there were communists inside America was very concerning for people. But that got even worse in 1950, because Senator McCarthy, so an important American politician who was a Republican, announced that he knew about 200, I think more specifically it was 205, 205 communists inside the government. And when he announced this, this terrified people because they saw, you know, Senator McCarthy was an important person in the government and he's now saying that there are 200 communists inside the government. So what I want you to do now is to find out more about, um, the, uh, about Senator McCarthy and about McCarthyism. Uh, to do that, you need to open the information sheet the information sheet looks like this or something like this it should look a bit better on your screen um, you need to use that information to make a timeline of McCarthyism so read through the information but look out for the dates so for example you can see here that in 1951 accusations spread to people in the entertainment industry okay so you need to use that information to continue the timeline 
The timeline has been started for you and you need to write down the beginning bit of that as well. So from 1945 up to 1950, you can summarise it in your own words and make it a bit shorter if you like. Um, but you then need to continue the timeline. So you can see on the bottom uh, left of your screen that you need to bring the timeline up to 1954 and make sure you're including specific information and also the keywords which you can see on the right of your screen. So the keywords including Cold War and the USSR. So this should take you about 10 minutes, maybe, maybe 15. So if you pause your video and make your timeline, please. Now you found out what McCarthyism was, we need to think about what the impact of it was. So how did this actually affect people? Although McCarthy was discredited in 1954 when he accused officers in the army of being communists, fear of communism and communists in general did not go away. Um, American politicians, whether they were Democrats or Republicans, um, realised that anti-communism was very, very popular amongst the American people. So in order to keep the support of the American people, they were very, very anti-communist. So they would criticise communism, um, they continued the Cold War, they started wars against foreign communist powers like North Korea, like North Vietnam, um, even though they often knew that those wars were unwin unwinnable. Um, in the second half of year 10, you will look at the Korean War and the Vietnam War. And both of these were arguably started because the American people were terrified of communism and American politicians wanted to win American people's support by looking tough on communism. And McCarthyism was partly responsible for that. Um, previously, before the 1950s, Democrats had often had policies which involved high government spending to help people to live good lives. So, for example... Roosevelt and the New Deal. He'd spent lots of money on making sure people um, in America were looked after. But from the 1950s onwards, both Democrats and Republicans were scared that if they introduced policies that involved high government spending, that people would accuse them of being communists. And therefore, governments avoided spending money on things like health care and welfare because they wanted to make themselves look like they were a long way away from communism. Um, and another really important impact of McCarthyism is the impact that it had on individuals. So hundreds of people were put in prison unfairly. Um, their trials often didn't have enough evidence to accuse them. They were usually not actually communists. And even if they were communists, that doesn't mean that they were doing anything wrong against the government. Um, they were later released, but they spent quite a few years in prison. And over 10,000 people lost their jobs. And because they'd been put on those blacklists, many of them would never again find work. You can see here an example of one of the things that I've been talking about. So posters like these, um, um, I think, oh, actually, sorry, this is the front of a book cover, um, gives you an idea of how American people felt about communism after McCarthyism. Um, and you can see there's a guy sort of stabbing America, in a, a, sort of like in the heart of America, um, and he has a tattoo on his wrist, which was the symbol of the Soviet Union or the USSR. Um, and it's obviously this book's trying to convince American people that communism is going to destroy America unless American people do something about it. And it's partly these attitudes that explains why American people were supporting um, wars against communism like the Vietnam War. So... Um, two final tasks for this lesson then. So the first thing I'd like you to do is to make revision notes for McCarthyism. Um, and you can do these as bullet points. Whenever you're revising an event in history, you need to focus on what actually happened, why did it happen, and what changed as a result. It's a good idea to do it in bullet points and to do subheadings. So what happened, why did it happen, what was the impact. So make those subheadings and then include maybe three bullet points for each. Don't try and write down everything you know. Definitely don't try and put down any, everything that was in that sheet. Um, you just need to make sure that you're covering the key things and that you're using specific evidence. Um, so once you've made those revision notes, the final thing you need to do is to answer this exam question. Um, the exam question is only four marks, so you should only be writing one paragraph and you should only spend five minutes on it. Um, in the exam question, you need to identify two impacts of McCarthyism and you need to support those impacts with evidence. And make sure you link to American people's lives. So not just the way that politics changed, but the way that people's lives changed. Okay, once you've done that, go on to just check that you've completed everything for this lesson. 
So well done, year 10. What you should have done this lesson is your five review questions. You should have written three questions to explain what communism was and why people were scared of it. You should have made a timeline of McCarthyism, completed some revision notes for McCarthyism and answered a four mark question. Once you've done that, make sure you save your work or put it safely away, ready for when you return to school and see if there's any other lessons that your teachers asked you to complete for this week. Thank you very much and well done.